Or is it just home suji reaction? This is why this bird could be a threat to international security by the channel Casual Geographic. I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't gonna do this reaction because last time I did a Casual Geographic reaction, I got a copyright strike. Not from Casual Geographic, mind you, from some clip that he used, like a three second clip. And I'm like, okay that three second clip and you know obviously on top of that casual geographics commentary on top of that my commentary that's fair use if there is any fair use right but i'm like okay I'm, i don't want to like get in that hassle so i emailed the guy the the guy who gave the strike right the three second clip guy so he basically emails me back saying like if you give me 100 euros basically uh i'm gonna take back the strike it's like Come on, are you kidding me? That's like basic, clear extortion. I'm like, I'm not doing that, right? But my video basically got about 900,000 views. Like, you know, I didn't make 0.3 euros or something. You want me to give you 100 euros for what? So I'm like, ah, screw that. And I, I could basically fight back here saying like, oh, this is fair use and all that. But I don't know where the YouTube hassle goes. I don't know if it's going to go to court or what. I don't want to go uh, all that. So yeah, for now, I guess I'm going to leave it, but we'll see. So, I, I don't know, I'm, I was scared to do this reaction, like, I don't need second strike, but who knows, we'll see. And Kezio Jurafik, I'm pretty sure he got the strike as well. I don't know if he fought back or not, but yeah, that's just insane. Everything's fine, but, like, 100 euros things, like, really? Uh, I mean, if it's, like, let's just say, if, if he asks 100 euros from Kezio Jurafik, at the, at the second, you would even think, like, okay, his video got millions of views, probably got enough of money, even then, I don't know, like, how much he's gonna make 100 euros, is that, like, I don't know. But just asking for 100 euros just felt like, are you serious right now? But yeah. So let's go this one. Well, there we go. Not even Dr. Seuss on Adderall and a deadline could cook up a bigger threat to national security than this bird. Owls are like real life cryptids, avian aliens that overslept and missed their return flight home. If cameras weren't real and you'd never seen one, you would not believe this bird existed on the same planet. And that's all the intro we need because we can start right here with an owl giving you a backstage VIP pass to its eyes. Owls have ears and no. They're not here, but on the sides of its face with feathers covering it like a comb over covering a bald spot. Call it alopecia. I can't tell you how many licks to get to a Tootsie Pops G spot, but it takes two fingers to get to a Hoot Ninja's control center. And speaking of seeing, that's another thing. Owls don't have eyeballs, more like eye tubes that can't move and are locked in their sockets. Which is how a bird already associated with death can be on straight exorcist timing. Able to turn their heads 270 degrees without divorcing their skulls to Antoinette way, thanks to special blood vessels in the neck. And the only reason they even have to do all that is because as creatures of the night, they have giant eyes to catch enough light to see. Think of the chronically perked out primate the Tarsier. But owls also have small skulls, so having eyes built like rods is the only way they can fit. Owl eyes are huge. Yeah, man, I'm not gonna lie, Owl, owls are the one they use apart from bat as like, the only reason bat is associated with something dark is because of Dracula. Otherwise, owls are the one people always like, oh, they're like, first of all, they like, you know, stand this upright, just staring at you with those eyes at night. Obviously, that's their thing, but yeah, you can understand how humans can make them into like creepy, cryptid, like he said, type of creatures. Uh, and it, you know, why can you see the tube? That's the thing. Like, if you remove it, why can't? What is the uh, evolutionary thing behind it? Like, things don't just happen, right? There has to be reason behind it. So, what is like? It's needed to get the heat out or something. Is that what it is? For reference, if human eyes were proportionally the same, we'd be walking around with glimpsed globes the size of grapefruits. I really can't stress how much of a cheat code those are. Some, like the Oriental Bay, can see with their eyes closed. Those eyes might be the biggest self-report that owls aren't from this earth. Quite possibly literally, you can tell a lot about a person from their eyes, and the same goes for owls, but with their color. I did say creature of the night, but not all of them are not colored. <laughs> owls with yellow eyes are more likely to be diurnal and active during the day. Orange means they're probably crepuscular, and if eyes are windows to the soul, black eyes tell you no one's been home for a minute. But also that they're nocturnal and darkness really is their domain. But then, you have this. If you ventured on the cryptid side of the internet, you definitely know about Mo Mothman, a humanoid demon spawn with two eyes. All of that isn't oh it's not the fallout thing yeah right it's from uh west virginia thing that's why it's in the game 
is apparently redder than any red you've ever seen. Well, if you thought I was being cute about the cryptid stuff, this is the Stygian Owl of South America. Named after the river of sticks that the souls of the dead would have to travel to get to the underworld of Hades, according to Greek mythos. Their eyes are naturally yellow, but the special tissue for night vision behind its retina causes it to reflect red under artificial light. And between that and the pseudo horns, you can kind of see how the mix-up might have happened. There's also the infamous Flatwoods Monster with free real estate in West Virginia folklore, which might have just been a barn owl from a really unfortunate angle, which is also understandable. But those that know about barn owls, and if you don't you will in this video, barn owls are a different kind of freaky. But the most cursed owl might be the one that's not alive anymore. Ornomegalonyx was a giant ancient Cuban predator of a bird believed to have stood at up to three feet. What the fuck is that? That tall? Oh hell no, that's like no. Mm -mm. That's way too big man. That's way too fucking big. For a bird? It's like, uh, who are the like, the, the big birds basically with big neck that like, uh, you know, eat corpses and things. What are they, like, vultures? Are the vultures are the tall one with the big neck and things that are really big? Oh, there's something like that. Look at that and look at those long, this is insanity. See what, what weird thing about this, like all these owls are so creepy and you know, all that. When you really go close and just like, uh, you know, just like really hear them all that. It's like, oh man, that's very, very cute with the sound and everything, right? There was also, a, I'm pretty sure it was a, a clip of an owl, baby owl, who first time hears something just panics. So it's like, you can make like how cat videos are on internet. You can make videos like that about owls. The only reason you don't because they are like night creature and we are not night creatures. So it's like not, not going to be that much interaction, but still seven inches tall. It was such a unit that the first scientist to see its bones thought it was a type of terror bird before it was later classified as an owl. But terror bird doesn't have to be a name to be a lifestyle because they were believed to be ambush predators that would have airdropped you to the afterlife with bone crushing talons. It's also believed they would have murked prey as big as modern day black bears. As big as they are, they probably spent most of their time on the ground and only took flight when fight was off the table, basically acting like turkeys. Sounds like no big deal until you remember how on-timing turkeys can be. But like Fidel, the op of Cuba has long been past tensed, but today, there's over 250 flavors of hoop men populating the earth. Obviously way too many for me to describe them all, so I'ma just run through my favorites. This is the largest owl in the world, the Blakenson's fish owl, and they earned a distinction off a mostly pescatarian diet, clearly cut from the same cloth as his decommissioned Cuban cousin. And then you have the owl just bigger than a Coke can with less gravity than a golf ball, the elf owl. But that doesn't stop this undersized Muppet from being a menace. Oh, come sport. on, man. Why? Can, can we not take that as pet? Like, I was it's like insane. I'm pretty sure people have pets, the small owls like that. Scorpions, among other things. This is a great horned, also called a tiger owl, but not because of their colorway, but because they're like nature said f it and gave an apex predator wings. I'm gonna get to them later, but just know this aggro tweety is to other owls what orcas are to the cetacean race. There's my personal favorite, the snowy owl, a battle tested surf. Okay, you can't compare something to orcas unless you're really serious, so I'm guessing that owl's pretty fucked up. Because orcas are like, what, one of the most fucked up animals on the planet? Survivalists able to live in one of the most unlivable places on earth, but they're also proof that white air force energy can be just as much of a headache There's a saw wet and a spectacled owl which are cute enough to make me rethink the entire narrative of this video There's a Eurasian eagle owl whose run puts that same narrative on life support and who I'm only thinking of now Because of the one named Flacco I saw at the Central Park Zoo before he escaped and became a regular Manhattan resident That is until he hit a building and was diagnosed with death RIP Flacco and here we have the powerful owl and yes, that's its honest to Abe name it's another one with a Jurassic pedicure, which means it can take down some of the biggest prey of any owl. It's an owl that copied a hawk's homework and changed some of the answers, and with a name like that, you can probably guess where it's based. In fact, I don't even think I really need to Australia. With owl seasoning every place on Earth that isn't Antarctica, owls obviously have different looks, but also different sounds. Whoever told you they only hoot lied more than an underage owl. And while hanging with owls is usually a hootin' nanny, if your neighbors would caterwauling barred owls, you'll wake up to the set of Planet of the Apes. They're not all bad, the western screech owl sounds like a fumbled ping Pong ball. And you can't tell me the Eastern Screech doesn't give Kentucky Derby. But you won't find an outburst that's more to blame for mental anguish than the Banshee Coated Barn Owl. I keep trying to tell you, there's something about barn owls. Sound might arguably be the most unsettling thing about them, and I'm not talking about the sound they make. You definitely know that owls have better hearing than a mom after you close a door a decibel above what's acceptable, but you might not. Ah, oh, come on, man. See, I've, one thing I've noticed that 
what we conceive as terrifying there's evolutionary reason behind it that's why certain things are terrifying just like to the you know to, perfectly how human mind can if we were to think like what is a bird and what is a terrifying bird we can make we would make something like this owls and things like that which means what we think of terrifying is an actual feature of the nature that they make it like a nocturnal things like imagine like those uh, deep sea creatures those are terrifying it's like straight out of like some hollywood movie why because that's what we perceive as terrifying and those are the creature like that there's a reason behind it so owls being this kind of a terrifying them being nocturnal creature kind of makes sense I know just how far nature went to give them the advantage. Those two ears we talked about aren't symmetrical. The left ear is usually lower than the right, which means an owl on the prowl can pinpoint exactly where a noise came from based on what ear detects it first. If it hits the left first, then the owl can be sure it came from below. Owls also have faces built like satellite dishes, or I guess technically the dishes look like owls. Either way, it collects sound and funnels it towards the ears. The wildest variant of this build is the great gray owl that honestly looks like it got its business punched in by nature. They have the biggest facial disc of any owl, meaning you can hide under two feet of snow and ice and still get got by a gray. They'll even blindly nosedive into the snow, just like the Arctic fox, because same test, same solution. That's convergent evolution. Owls also figured out how to rearrange their feathers to change the shape of their disc, meaning they can basically shape shift. Depending on the situation, owls can make themselves look bigger when threatened, or the changeling will do the opposite, either for camouflage or for the what the fuck factor. You see what I mean when I say no other animal has contributed more to cryptid culture. Imagine being the first person to see this IRL. But I'm not done, there's one more supernatural ability owls have that might just be the most OP of all, and it's also because of their feathers. An experiment by BBC Earth took three birds and had them fly from one researcher to another with several highly sensitive microphones to pick up even the slightest noise. First was the pigeon. <laughs> No real surprise to anyone who's lived near them. Next was the fastest bird alive, the They're silent? falcon. Again, pretty standard stuff. But then came the barn owl, and this is why I called them hoot ninjas earlier. All right, let's talk about it. Pigeons are social birds that also get put in a bucket by multiple birds. What the fuck? I mean, again, nocturnal owl, it's not a surprise, but there was no sound. It figured out somehow to you know flap its wings so it makes no sound. I guess when it comes to nocturnal animals, do they do they fight against bats? I mean there are big bats, right? So is does that happen? Because that would make sense because bats have echo location things like that. Bigger ones don't have that, right? Bigger ones don't have echo location, so I don't know. So bats have the echo thing, and I don't know. It's like this way. It's like detects. I don't know. But I'm pretty sure like uh, owls are raptors, right? That's the that's the category with the like claws and things how, how eagles and things are, basically can claw you to death. Basically, big bird, so that makes owl op in a way, right? It's a nocturnal creature. It makes no sound and can fuck you up with the claws. Birds of prey. So their takeoff sound is like an alarm call to the rest of the flock. So if one pigeon goes, you know the rest will follow. The crested pigeon even evolved their own form of a ringtone. Then there's a pigeon paralysis demon, the falcon. And since they put all their evolution points into speed, they don't have to worry about the sound they make, just one shotting their prey into the next world. But with owls, they have modified flight feathers that makes it a living lethal weapon with a silencer. There is one important catch though. A sweetie sold its soul for a built-in muffler, and it cost a waterproof oil coating on their feathers. That's how the steely-eyed gatekeeper of the night turns into an alcoholic muppet when you add water. This might be the most damning evidence for the alien allegation. 70% of the earth is water. If this is what 70% of the world does to you, I have to assume you're not from it. And once owls get too wet, they can't fly. And clearly they didn't read the terms of service because they do not look happy about it. I'd say it's a fair trade though, because a flight happy dinosaur on silent mode with night vision and god tier hearing equipped might be one of the most... Well, technically most birds don't like water, right? I'm pretty sure like if you, if you throw water at any birds like pigeons or something, like that's a problematic thing. It will have issues with the flying and everything. So yeah, water is not really that much of a friend when it comes to birds. Conceptually terrifying things to be hunted by. They say getting gripped by an owl feels a lot like getting caught in the jaws of a German shepherd. Getting disqualified from life by an owl usually means getting crushed to death. If the prey is too big, they'll just dismember it. And since owls like to eat their prey head first, that usually means decapitation. So if you ever see an animal that's physically lost its mind, you can be sure an owl somewhere ate good. Owls will also surplus kill. A picture was taken of a snowy owl pantry with about 70 dead lemmings arranged like a wreath. And there's even a story of scientists finding an owl nest with 70 plus cat collars, although I personally don't believe that one. But the avian assassin is for sure one of the most underrated predators in nature. Yeah, we're not about to skip past an owl. Seriously, nobody talks about how dangerous owls are. 
the day I realized that they are in raptor category, where, like eagles and like falcons, with the claws and things, like their size and everything, like what the fuck? People just think of, owl. oh look at that nocturnal creatures, big eyes, that's it. Nobody thinks of how deadly they are. Snatching a hawk in its own crib. You see, there's birds of prey, and the ones birds prey about, and owls are definitely the latter. Owls will regularly grief other birds of prey, like this beheaded red-tailed hawk, or this young cooper hawk. As you've seen, they'll use the cover of darkness to commit hit and flies on families like this peregrine falcons, and it's not always about a meal, sometimes it's about sending a message. Owls don't usually build their own nest, and this homicidal air mime has been seen attacking bald eagles in an attempt to hijack theirs. But owls also don't believe in squatters' rights, so God help the Kestrel that try to use their own strat against them. Owls are honestly what would happen if you all right what is a squatter's right i've been hearing that recently i've been hearing some states are getting rid of it is is, is the right that like if somebody literally gets inside your home and just makes it's his home or something that's his right that's insane somebody can just like literally break into your house and like it's his now house now how does the squatter rights work and why did that come to be is there a reason behind it because to me that feels insane like what about you have guns uh, for security right you all say like second amendment i need guns to defend my house and and then you also have law that says if somebody does break into your house it's his right to stay there that's just insane if you gave honey badgers red bull they're definitely one of those <laughs> around and find out animals but there is one bird owls have generational beef with Owls and crows have one of the most infamous rivalries in nature, and it's because owls will kill without prejudice, and often that includes crows. But crows are also highly intelligent, and arguably the smartest birds on earth, but more importantly, they have the capacity to hold grudges and seek revenge. So crows will mob any owls caught in broad daylight when they have the advantage, harassing the bird of prey using the OP power of friendship. I mean, come on man, it's like crows like, oh, you won the battle, but I'm gonna win the war. That is insane. I'm pretty sure like owls probably realized not to fuck with crows. If humans are anything to go by, if if you have intelligent creatures like crow who can remember you and keep a grudge and is smart, that's just like a disastrous recipe. I bet if you like throw owls and crows into like one biome that just says tears who says and just leave them be, I'm pretty sure years later there'll be only crows left. All owls, owls would be dead just because crows are that smart. It's how the same predator that can check falcons, hawks, and even eagles can get railroaded by a murder of crows. The beef is so ingrained that crows that have never even seen an owl will instinctively choose violence, and owls will take out any single lone crows they can. And I know I've been saying crows, but ravens aren't exactly fans either, especially when an owl can change its Facebook status to nevermore. There's another bird of prey this flying derecho has major problems with each other. Owls regularly hunt and kill other owls, and the two main suspects, the great horned owl from before, and the barred owl. Barred owls are pretty competent predators on their own, and often they get victimized by the flying tiger. It's technically not cannibalism. I mean, let's be honest, right? You got screwed by nature, you have to become nocturnal now because you can fly in daylight, right? You're not gonna be a joyful bunch, are you? Right? You're gonna be miserable 24-7. And yeah, you're gonna probably kill each other as well. So there you go. That's what's that's happening. But that is insane. How are they like enemy of themselves and crows and somehow still surviving? The same way a leopard eating a cheetah or a red fox flatlining its arctic cousin isn't, it still feels wrong as hell. The barred owl can be a different kind of problem, which is why the US government has been trying to pass a bill to mark 400,000 of them. And if that sounds OD, it's because the flying invasive garbage disposal eats literally everything, to the point where they've been outcompeting the native spotted owl into near oblivion. The crazy thing is, life retiring 400,000 would barely put a dent in their population. Owls will also run fades with deer, and they're not afraid to press other land predators in their territory like coyotes. Snowy owls are a special kind of trigger happy since they have to compensate for having their nests on the ground. The result is the biggest crash out of the owls choosing fight like and flight with a whole wolf. There have even been reports of them dive bombing polar bears that wander too close. But for all their talents, there aren't really any documented cases of- What the fuck? Polar bears? How is it attacking polar bear? I mean, it's just like attacking polar bear before polar bear basically walks away. No way can take down polar bear, that would be insane. But owls are OP man, in a way, right? In a way. Uh, not tears away where you actually have to think about their survivability chance as a group but yeah they are kind of OP in that way like the US has to like say oh we gotta have to kill 400,000 of certain owl that is insane number what happens if like uh, owl d d discovers a like German sapper or something like domesticated dog I mean come on it can't take down that right problem with owls and crows in general is like they would aim for your eyes I'm pretty sure that's the case with crows and ravens I think 
they will try to take out your eyes right does that is that the case with i'm, I'm pretty sure raptors eagles there was a thing i remember like the people were afraid of these things basically taking taking out your eyes and face because they will always attack your face for some reason is that the case with owl because that's terrifying of an owl putting a person in a coffin. That is, unless you believe the staircase owl theory. In 2003, Michael Peterson was convicted of murdering his wife Kathleen in their home in North Carolina. And according to the autopsy report, the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head. But there's been legitimate theories that it was actually a barred owl that attacked her and caused her to fall down the stairs. The theory gained more traction when it was revealed that feathers were later found in her hair and that the lacerations on her head were pretty consistent with getting mauled by an owl. Now, full disclosure, I'm not really that informed on the case, but even I thought that was a stretch. But crazier things have happened. Let me remind you that the entire world thought Lindy Chamberlain was guilty, whole time a dingo really did eat her baby. We might never know for sure, but there's a reality where a man served hard time for a crime an owl committed. Now you might come away from this video th Man, there are way too many crimes happen where guilt, uh, innocent person found guilty just because of like, laws work with common sense. Oh, this is must be spouse. There's nobody else around. What if we found feathers? Ah, come on, that can't be an owl. But what if it was? You just convicted an innocent person and for for big centers i'm guessing because somebody's life is lost so yeah way too many innocent people might be in the jail that's fucked up thinking i feel some type of negative about owls quite the opposite i've gained a whole new respect for these birds for one they're free pest control just one barn owl family can eat a thousand rodents in a season speaking of the barn owl they're monogamous and not only will they often mate for life they'll often return to the same nest year after year you can't have that kind of longevity without reinforcing your bond and the owl equivalent of a vow renewal is what you're seeing right here called billing that and a good intimate preening session and while they're still wild animals that really aren't meant to be pets the ones rescued by humans can often end up imprinting on them the result makes depression hear boss music and even though they're often associated with dark and death in japan they're often seen as a sign of good fortune moral of the story owls aren't harbingers of doom they're not the feathery antichrist nah owls are just the cats of birds and i honestly love that for them but that's gonna do it for this video i'm not kidding when i say i hyper fixated on owls for a couple of weeks so much that i'm actually planning a trip to a raptor trust near me if this video gets 130,000 likes i'll share some pictures and videos with y'all and don't worry i didn't forget about the promise i made here because y'all really demolished last video like goal like for real i did not think y'all would do it that fast and because i'm a man of my word i will be visiting an elephant sanctuary sometime this summer and recording it for y'all i do want to make sure i'm supporting a legitimate place so if anyone has any experience with them and can recommend any ethical ones feel free to comment down below we'll get to that bridge but until we do make sure you drink water if you have a spouse go tell me you love them right now if owls can do it so can you support your local sky cat and tell him to tell him to come to india or something for a lot of centuries like uh that that one century as well, right? In uh, I think there's a North India. There's a zoo named after that guy. I forgot his name. Who basically like killed a lot of cats and predators in India, right? So something like that. I don't know. He could basically you know visit that. Like you know there is like uh, where where I live very close to is like uh, Gir uh, Zoo, basically with uh, lions and things like that, right? So I don't know. But yeah. Uh, <clears throat> you know these owls are really good in a way uh because i already know like people pet them right you see in cages and things. that's the thing with harry potter and all that right that's why it's in harry potter so yeah uh, owls are uh, you know never most most animals are not the thing we think of like oh nightmares no probably not right some of them become too fucked up because uh, nature demanded it or something uh, like hyenas and how lions work and things like that right only dick i can think of is like orcas they don't have to be that level of dick dolphins can be like murderous and like more effed up things but yeah i don't know yeah owls are like they're nocturnal creature they had to be nocturnal that's why they became that right and they you know they're raptor family so they're like deadly in that way but yeah people who like pet pet owls what do they do like don't they like uh, sleep in daylight and like wake up at night so when you're sleeping your owl is awake making sound how does that work doesn't that like uh, you know like causes issue for you how people pet owls i don't get it right. sometimes you know i'm i'm a nocturnal myself lots of time because i don't sleep until like three four wake up in like nine ten i'm a i'm a civil contractor i can like go to site whenever the fuck i want there's no nine to five job type of way so usually i'm up at night and things like that usually because like, i have to post videos like this which is like us time right so no, that's just an excuse. I can make video in advance and like do that, but still.
Alright, well, that was why this bird could be a threat to internal security by its own casual Let's hope I don't get strike for this one as well. Because that's a panic thing now. But yeah. If you like my Alexander phone, subscribe and I'll see you next time.